This is Mario with Mia Microflight and in this particular video segment we're going to be talking about pre-rotator and one-way bearings. Now here in my, in my hand I have a, a one-way bearing. Basically it's a part that has been assembled inside a, a sleeve. This is all pressed uh, in, in production with some uh, needle bearings. They're called needle bearings because I guess they look like, like needles and they're long and they're, if you look inside the, uh, the one-way bearing casing you can see the bearings the needle bearings inside and the way this particular device works is it's uh the bearings are laid out inside the uh inside an inner ring and that ring is held with a via some kind of a spring uh, which is another sleeve that holds the bearings in place now the way this works typically is it can only allow a shaft that a precise in uh, outside diameter this, this also has a, an inside the line, a diameter tolerance that has to be fit precisely over a shaft. So when, the, when this spins one way or rotates one way, it catches or latches onto the shaft, thus carrying the shaft with its rotation. Now, if I stop this rotating the, the, the one-way bearing, the shaft inside and anything that's attached with the shaft will keep rotating in the same direction it was spun on. So that's basically the, the operation of one-way bearing and you can probably go online and find out a little more about that. I just did this to illustrate the, uh, the, the, the start of what, what I'm about to discuss next. Now, let me go back here to the one-way bearing. The way this is ma manufactured is the one, the, all the needles are inside and unlike a regular ball bearing which has an inner race, both at the top and at the bottom you can see the inner races of the of regular ball bearing. Uh, this does not have a, 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 a you know upper and, and lower inner race. That's something that would be placed on top, could rotate freely. So most of the time these things are are you know they rotate inside freely, but on the surface, on the very edge of the one-way bearing, because it's steel and it's encapsulated in such a way, it creates surface friction with whatever it makes contact with. All right. So keep that in mind. Now. now Let's take the one-way bearing and look at, at a way that it's typically uh, uh, assembled in uh, pre-rotators for uh, radio control auto gyros. Now, this bearings are, they come, you know, for most of these RC auto gyros that people are building is they embed one-way gear right inside the, uh, the gear itself. And some of these gears, this is a gear from a 450 uh, size helicopter and it came already with an aluminum uh, coupler there that supports the one-way bearing inside of that. Great, you have a one-way system here that's, uh, that's actually working inside the gear. When the motor that's coupled to the gear starts to spin up the gear, it's going to latch onto the shaft, which is attached to the rotor in an RC, uh, uh, in an RC helicopter or in an RC auto gyro. Okay, so as this is spinning up, because it's got a one-way bearing inside, what happens when you stop spinning this is, you, you know, you latch on the rotor, you get that going, you stop the motor from spinning the main gear, and this starts to rotate, okay? The shaft starts to rotate inside the, uh, the one-way bearing freely, supposedly. But there's friction because typically the, the way the, the RC auto gyros are, are set up is you have the rotor and then that's sitting right on top of the one-way bearing. Now you could use two additional regular ball bearings, one on top and one at the bottom underneath the, uh, the one-way bearing so it creates less friction on the surfaces as the, the shaft or, or the rotor is spinning on that one-way bearing. So basically that's how 99.9% .9 of the RC auto gyros that people are building are set up. Easy line, I wanted to come up with something simpler. I didn't want to complicate the rotor head by making all these extra parts. This is my particular uh, one-way uh, system, if you will. And it's much more simplistic, and I'll explain the components here. You have the rotor head which is my typical rotor head that I use on the uh, RC Auto Gyros, uh, all the Mia Easy line, as well as the retrofits that I've been selling for the Auto G. This is the plate, it's a little scuffed up because it's, you know, it's, been, uh, it's gone through uh, quite a bit of use. But if you look at the components here, and also this is 
the way I do things. Uh, you know, I started machining Delrin hubs for these particular plates and also as retrofits for the Auto G rotor heads. And they had, you know, three little screws. So you have hardware and, uh, you know, nuts and hardware, and plus I have to machine that. Well, I came up with this particular setup here of, of a hub. And this is me and Microflex because I haven't not seen anybody else do this. Perhaps there are some people that are catching on to this after the fact, after, you know, I, I've already sold quite a bit, a bit of these uh, uh, units as well as my uh, easy uh, auto gyro kits. So I'm pretty sure people are getting, you know, the, the, the idea from here. But this is the way this works. Basically, two parts. Okay, and they, they lock really easy through the center hole on the on the plate on the rotor flex plate and it's been uh, machined with a through hole to take two of the ball bearings these are the regular ball bearings that sit inside the shaft now this is my, my particular system and it's a very very efficient system because it spins extremely smooth uh, very very smooth very precise very simple you know i like simplicity in my designs and all you know all my kits are designed this way with off-the-shelf parts to give the user the power to fix themselves and if not you know you can come back and, and buy these parts from me now there are some parts that i make purposely you know with specific geometry and with specific uh, uh, design details such as the rotor head that, I, that I'm employing here. Now this has specific geometry and is done, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, is done to assist the rotation and also the stability of the rotor head system. You can watch my videos on, uh, on my YouTube channel or via my website and you can find out a little more about that. Because I Going back to the one-way bearing, okay, I elongated my uh, original Mia Easy Gyro uh, control head, which is this part here. It's aluminum, and you can see the same shape there. I, you know, I use this this uh, U channel, and it's got a slotted end here. So all I did was extend this so that I can uh, make provisions for mounting, a, you know, a, um, a pre-rotator motor. So you have basically a, the, the control head. You have the main shaft, which in my uh, radio control auto gyros, this is static. This does not move and it should not move as far, as far as I'm concerned because you want that shaft to be solid. You want the rotor head to ride on that shaft precisely and smoothly so that you know you, 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 know, you don't want this flapping. So that's the reason why my, my shafts are done this way and it's got a, a lock knot there that you can and if you ever bend this you can re-bend it at the field as I've shown in some of my videos uh, or you can just take it out and you know put a new one. It's very easy. So that's the, the base of the EMEA Microflight uh, pre-rotator system. The, uh, the next uh, part is, is the EMEA Microflight uh, spur gear. Now notice that this gear here also rides on two ball bearings, very smooth. It does not need to ride on ball bearings as I was saying earlier in my video because all this is doing is pre-spinning up the main rotor. Once that rotor gets going, you want the rotor to spin freely not so much the gear. So basically the uh, rotor head uh, pre-rotation device is uh, a simple cam system that is attached to the, the hub and as <coughs> gravity uh, 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 pulls the, uh, the cam down it latches onto one of the spokes on the gear so when the gear engages it it carries the complete rotor head with it I'm doing here is uh, showing it manually just for simplicity but I'll be attaching the uh, the radio system uh, and, and controlling it via the radio in a little while here so basically that catches the spoke one of the spoke of the gear catches the uh, the cam carries the rotor head and basically starts to spin it now once this is stopped once you stop the, the main gear or the, the pre-rotator this keeps going and it unlatches frees the uh, the cam from the device it's very simplistic and once again, it's operated via gravity. You know, this has a little bit of weight to it, so it, it, it falls down, catches onto the gear, and that's how that works. Very, very simple system. This particular system will work on, on the 1.0. will also work uh, up to the 1.5 uh, 1 with, with, without changing any of the, um, uh, the sizes of the particular uh, parts here. 
Now, once I start getting into the uh, 1.75, 2.0, and I even have a 3.0 size, which is a, a very jumbo size uh, RC auto gyro on the, in the easy line, now these parts have to be scaled up accordingly and also sized properly so that everything is pro, uh, uh, operates uh, safe. A very safe, safe system, nothing's gonna fly out out of here so and it's very simplistic the beauty about this is very simplistic and of course um you know cost is going to be uh, very cost effective too so basically that's a mia microflight pre-rotator system for uh, the easy line and also for the uh as upgrades for the auto g's and do it yourself rc auto gyros we went ahead and connected the uh the radio system here and uh, speed control and a battery so that I can power this directly from my transmitter. Uh, now you can set up your pre-rotation uh, trigger point on your uh, transmitter if you have a potentiometer you can use that and you can, if you have a spare channel you can do it. I just have this right now connected to the speed control on my, my main speed control just for the sake of this video but like I said you want to connect that to a spare channel that you can control the speed gradually. So as you increase the, the, the speed on the pre-rotator motor, you can see how it, it latches onto the latches onto the uh, the cam. The cam locks the rotor and it carries it through. Now once I stop the motor, I stop the motor right at that point, you can see how, how smooth and how it keeps going. And that's basically what you want in an RC Auto Gyro. You want that head to be uh, as smooth um, and, and efficient as possible because that's because you're relying basically on, on, on air, you know, the air that's going into the blades that are going to keep this, this up and spun as you push the, the auto gyro forward or as you carry it through if you have a, a tractor design. So basically, once again, you know, you want to, and of course, you know, the gravity pulls, pulls this cam down. It engages into the, one of the spurs on, on the main gear. And as you pre-rotate with with the throttle slowly to full throttle if you want let go of the pre-rotator stop that and that keeps going very simple very effective the Mia Microflight pre-rotator unit